Cheers. Can, cheers. Hi, witchlings. Welcome back to my channel. Um, this, if you don't know who this is, this is the Witch of Wonderlust, which if you were not following her, you should be. But we're gonna ask each other questions. We're gonna chat. We're gonna yeah. have a good so, time. So grab some tea or coffee as we're drinking and um, hang out with us. And we're gonna just ask each other about our crafts and talk about what's similar and what's different and oh, trade that's tips. My, that's so, my favorite thing, talking yeah. about crafts and shit. Ooh, yeah. Get excited. Well, where should we start? How did you start? How did How I did start? How did you get into witchcraft? Because I feel like that's a question I get a lot. Mm. That's and a hard question to answer for me. Isn't it? Yeah, because it's like, there wasn't like a defining point that was like, oh, I'm practicing witchcraft. I mean, maybe there was, but not, not that I remember. Because there's things, like, I've been practicing since I was, like, 13, 14. Oh, man. But it, I didn't call it witchcraft. It was just, like, what yeah. I did, you know? Like, it was just things that yeah. I did that I was like, okay, these are my rituals, and, like, if I don't do this, then this might happen, or if I do do this, then this will happen, or mm -hmm. things like that. So I just kind of, like, found patterns, but then I think only up until I was probably 16 or 17, I was like, oh, this is, like witchy and I'm like oh, okay I get it and then I hit it for a really long time from everybody and then, yeah you know so it wasn't like a it was more like a snowball yeah um I have spoken about it in interviews before which is always fun but they're like how did you get into it I'm like I saw I was asking for a sign from the universe to leave a bad relationship and saw blue jay and then got into oh. animal symb symbolism and from there that animal symbolism led into kind of witchcraft and paganism mm -hmm. and the first book I picked up was the worst book I've ever read uh Scott Cunningham's Book of Shadows yeah it's pretty bad that's not, that's um, not a great one it's not the worst one I've ever that, read I mean have you read witch I know so I, never, I was like I've never read that book and I refuse to read it and I am a fan of non-censorship and critical reading skills are there certain books that I look at that I'm like this would be better if it wasn't written yes yeah 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 uh, Witch by Lisa Leister is one, Witchcraft by Anastasia Gravewolf is another, and Anything by Julius Evola is there, too. Anyways. Anyway, <laughs> how did you get started? Uh, I started just by, I think I was more into the Tumblr, Pinterest type of witchcraft, mm. which definitely, you know, fucked with my head a little bit, because, like, a lot of the spells I pulled... It's heavy in aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was very into aesthetics, which wasn't bad. I was still doing spells, but I think I didn't fully understand the... Nope. Turn this light on. But you can keep talking. I didn't fully understand what, like, certain parts of witchcraft were. I cursed someone at seven, 16, 17. <sighs> It backfired on my family for four years. <gasps> yeah. The mess ups are always the best teachers though. Mm. And that's the that's the really tough part about I think especially being like online. They expect you to kind of like pave the way so that they don't have to mess up. Yeah. And yeah, so it's just kinda of like frustrating because it's not that you're like, yes, I want you to go through all these terrible things that I went through. Yeah. But failure and mistakes and it's what makes it's, I mean, it's what makes you grow grow too. in anything. Yeah. It genuinely, there are certain things where like, I wouldn't understand how to do baneful magic safely and effectively now if right. I didn't fuck it up when I was 16. And yes. I also, one of the reasons I'm super like into like, definitely do be safe with your deity work. Mm -hmm. The internet is on and off with what deity work is, but I had Kernanis reach out to me. It's difficult because I learned when you look up the kind of Arabian horned god, you don't get a lot of information. When I was looking up horned god and seeing symbols, I had like a vision in the bath, whole very witchy type thing. What you looked up was you got Kernanos. You got like this kind of ideal of the horned god. Mm. Whereas now I refer to him as Lucifotos or Dianus Lucifotos as like the other counterpart or the masculine sun counterpart to Diana. Do I still sometimes refer to him as Kananos because it's comfortable? Yes. So I genuinely think that deities will tell you certain information when you're ready. And he's been around since I was like 16, 17. He mm -hmm. was the first one. But then I got into deity work. Um, and with Kananos or Dianus or Tagni or Dianus Luciferus, whatever you want to call him, I tend to just call him 
Lucifer as Peace is Easy. I never worked with him. I just honored him and had, he was just around. He was a very protective energy, making sure everything went okay. In that process, I looked at my old Book of Shadows and I thought, 16 year old me thought that I was working with Bastet, Persephone, and the Morrigan. No, <laughs> but it was definitely like, I wanted to work with deities and was searching for it. Okay, so this is one thing that is clearly a stark difference between our crafts, mm -hmm. is I, I don't do any deity work. And That's other sexy though. That sounds like so much fun. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I don't do any deity work. Deity work. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, I did, I worked with Hecate for the mm -hmm. first time, and like that was the first time I ever did any kind of deity work. Mm -hmm. Like I had a teacher. Yeah. And so that was like really fucking wild. Yeah. And completely different from what I was used to. That's crazy. Whereas not my thing, which is why I don't work with her anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I still I'm still like thanks, I appreciate you, but like I don't work with her. Yeah, you got her statue. And yeah, stuff. she's still over there. It's a nice little honoring type thing. Yeah, and I mean, you know, I like I learned a lot, but I guess I don't know like what it is of like why I don't work with deities. It just like doesn't yeah. click. So like I would also say that there's a part of it that's when we both started witchcraft and what was in emphasized as important in okay. the craft. Explain. And I say that, so when you were 13, 14, I was, you're four years older than me, I was a baby. We were 13, 14, I was like 12. Okay, yeah. yeah. I didn't even know what witchcraft was. I was, however, making little tea parties for the land spirits. Okay, okay, so yeah, like it's the same thing. I honestly think that with the internet too, when you put your practice on the internet, there's a certain amount that affects you. When you started three or four years ago, four years, TD work was like not a thing. Like no one was talking mm. about it. That's Unless true. Unless I was on Tumblr, but it was mostly like connect with the earth, the land, like secular type stuff was very yeah. emphasized versus when I started, and I also was like on Tumblr a lot and people were very mm -hmm. into deity work when I was 16. So I have no doubt that reading a Wiccan book for the first time where they have deity work is like right in there, mm -hmm. as well as um, being on Tumblr and Pinterest and then eventually getting to TikTok has influenced my practice and how I see it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like, I did a lot of ancestor work, so, mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's always been, like, ingrained. And so that would be, like, the closest of, I guess, like, making altars and things like that mm -hmm. for not land spirits. Because land spirits have always, like, that's always been something that's, yep. it's more of just, like, hey, how's it going? Or, you know, hey, like, buddy, how you yeah, doing? it's it's more of just kind of, it's like your neighbors. Like There's also a definite, a definite pedestal that comes with deity work. That's yeah. difficult to... And I think I also have an up. issue with authority. There we go. So I think that's a big piece of it. Is this a shadow it. work session? It might be. Well, I mean, like, I know that I have an issue with authority. Shitty authority. Shitty authority is fair. But to be fair, like, like that's... Yes. Yeah. See, never under... I will, I will I never understand. Zeus. And that's... I do love Zeus. That's but. my own opinion. I just... I will never understand, like, okay. why people... I think that... People have gotten to the point on the internet, where at least on TikTok, that deity work is uh, in such a high regard. Mm -hmm. And I've literally seen people get trashed for saying that they won't work with deities. And really? Like, yeah. I mean, you get trashed for everything. I get trashed for drinking coffee, so. Really? Yeah, so my first, one of my first videos that like blew up that I actually, I privated because I want to redo it. The first thing I say, it's a 15 minute video. The first thing I say is like, where's my coffee? And then I grab it and I talk about witchy stuff. And the amount of comments that I got that was like, you call yourself a spiritual person and you drink coffee, like you have no idea what the oh, fuck that does to you. People. Like, yeah, and it's just like that. And then like I got trashed on just because it's like, like just so many different reasons of like why I shouldn't be drinking coffee. I... Like I was just like, I can't win with anything. YouTube and TikTok, people are really fucking mean for no reason. Really? I So YouTube, I think I've been pretty good so far in staying in my corner. Yeah. I have gotten a few shitty comments that I was just like, what is the point mm -hmm. of this? And whenever people like face consequences for posting like a stupid or mean comment, they're always like, didn't know you would take that so personally. And I'm like, you commented on my video. Like, the video it's that I so funny. sat down and I filmed and I put time and energy into and Five then edited. Five hours of work. Yeah, like minimum. Yeah. And then I edited and I took the time to upload and put a description mm -hmm. and a thumbnail. And, and then, then you, you just... Oh, I didn't know you were going to take that... Per like, yes, I, I took a lot of time. Like, this is my work. It's so of funny. Of course, it's fucking personal. Like, if you walked into someone... So, <laughs> and I'm going to use a metaphor because I love metaphors and I'm an English student. Um, if you walked into someone's job at, like, Starbucks and you get a drink or they make the time getting the drink and then they give you the drink and you literally just, like, say it's awful to their face, 
Of course it's gonna take it pers- they're gonna take that person. Like, it's a shitty thing to do. That's why no one usually does it, unless for assholes. There's a barrier on the internet where people don't really understand that, like, this is work. Well, another thing, too, is, like, with the Starbucks thing, right? It's like, yeah, I made that thing. I, I made the drink and you're gonna like shit on me, okay. Mm-hmm. But it's it takes it to a whole new level when it's like your work. Yeah. It's not just, you know, like something that you're doing for a it's job or like, like something else. Like it's work. literally, like, like if, if you, thank you. Like if you write a book or if you just like, if you were just like doodling and you like drew something and you were like, oh, this like, actually that came out. like a piece of shit. Yeah, like if you, if you like drew something and you were like, well, they, oh, this <laughs> actually came out really good. Or like you made a song and you're like, I kind of like this and you put it out there and somebody's like that's fucking garbage and you're like what the fuck and they're like well i didn't think you were gonna take that personally yeah i'm gonna take it <laughs> fucking personally bro like I, 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 i'm trying to think of all the so one of the comments i got was like not even aimed at me but i made a tweet about it like generally and this person got so upset and was very obsessive over it good if you're watching this whatever um but I'm used to Llewellyn, Llewellyn's book of correspondences. And I was like going in and just loosely using it. And they were like, I can never read anything by Llewellyn. Llewellyn is trash. They culturally appropriate everything. And I'm like, what? So I made a tweet and I'm like, hey, like, remember when we had those giant book lists coming out? Ever heard of someone who won't read a book by, its, uh, by because it's by a specific publisher? Like, that's the most, I didn't care. I was like, it didn't even take it personally. Yeah, it was more of just kind of like baffling of like, oh, that's weird. Baffling and also like the narrative of like, if this, like, you shouldn't read a publisher because of A, B, and C is so bad. And under the guys that Llewellyn culturally appropriates. Llewellyn does culturally appropriate, but they also have a lot of BIPOC authors that do amazing yeah. work. Yeah, they do. And like, to write off all the books under that publisher because of A, B, and C of the publisher, Mm -hmm. to me feels like you're doing more harm than good because you're writing off a lot of authors who actually have really good stuff. And then even authors who are like black indigenous people of color, which Llewellyn does not have a lot of black indigenous people of color writing for them. That will be a note. And I do have my beef with Llewellyn. But but it's it's the same thing of like, you can't just write off the whole thing. Mm -hmm just because of one detail. And it doesn't mean that you're, it, like people see things black and white. It's this or that, and it's never, it's never like There's that. There's no nuance. There's never an in-between of like, I like these things about Llewellyn, but they need to do better in these places. Oh my God, my shoulders. I did a poll class with Olivia last night. I'm pretty sure Olivia's gonna be making a video on it. It looked like a dork. <laughs> I mean, that, man, I'm, I need to dig up some of my first whole class videos. They're, I'm like walking around the pole like, I don't know what to do with this. That's fine. That's totally fine. And I'm going back next Tuesday. I feel like getting back into dance again would be something that's good for me. That's okay. So that's something that I get asked a lot of like, do I incorporate dance with my craft? Do you? Yes and no. Like people see your practice mm-hmm. as like a separate piece of your life and not just what you do. Like. Does that make sense? Like, it's yeah. like separated for some reason. And I get it because like when you're learning something new, it's hard to incorporate it in your life. But it's kind of like, if you're not a tea drinker, right? But then you're like, I want to drink tea. You have to like consciously think about what tea you're drinking and like how you're steeping or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like when you start, you have to, it, it is a separate thing that you like kind of have to make and time in the morning. And then you get into the habit. But then you just get into the habit. It's just a thing you do. It's like, like coffee. I drink coffee. I love coffee. Oh, yeah. So just making tea and I'm not thinking about it because it just happens throughout my day. It's the same thing with cra- like your craft, you just do it. Like I don't know. Yeah. And, and that's, well I'm a folk practitioner too and that's a big part of folk magic. Yeah, it's I just, mean you and me both. I think that's the where we like hit. Yeah. yeah. It's that's just the, something that you do. What I'm doing is just something my ancestors did. Right. They didn't even consider it witchcraft. No, they didn't consider it like to be separate at yeah. all. Like there was no separation, it's just your life. And so I think that's the tough thing. So. Yes and no, dance goes in there because, I mean, dance is a great way to raise energy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a great way to, it's a good offering. So, like, with my ancestors, I'll just, like, turn on some good, like, folk mat or folk music mm-hmm. with whatever yeah. I feel like they're feeling, and then I'll just, like, dance, and, like, hit it's fun. Pole. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll right. hit the pole. <laughs> my ancestors are Catholic, so. Yeah, so are mine. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the, it's the fun thing where, like, I have one very specific guy, my great-grandma, mm-hmm. and I have certain, my closer ancestors are a little bit more like chill. And then yeah. I have the older ancestors that are spiteful as fuck. See, that's, yeah, that's the weird thing is like, okay, so I have, I have one ancestor mm-hmm. who I was really surprised that 
is really accepting with everything that I do yeah. and is like totally chill and is just like, you were doing great, good job, honey. And I'm like, thanks. And then there's the older ancestors that are like confused, but like, you know, they're okay kind of, they're kind of like, yeah, like they're, they're confused, but they got the spirit, you know, they're kind of like, yeah, whatever works. And then there's some that they're are like, like no. what the fuck is happening? And it's on a specific side of my family that's yeah. like, Oh, so dance. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. We totally got off track. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. What's your go-to spell? My go-to spell? Because I feel like every witch has like a go-to spell. Well, okay. What do you define as a spell? Because again, that's a good like, is that like, I have to be like lighting a candle and like uh -uh. doing a thing or are, is it like just me putting intention and energy into something? Is uh, that a spell I to consider you? a spell to be putting intention and energy into something. Okay. Fuck. I, I think either coffee or tea. I mean, I do it every day. Yeah. So it's, and it's so small and it's so subtle and it's just like picking what tea yes. with correspondences, That's stirring a certain way, Yeah. sigil with a honey, uh -huh. or wearing amulets or charms mm -hmm. or things, or like, you know, my usual. Mine is probably veiling. Oh, okay. It's not even a spell, it's just a ritual that I do. Yeah. But it's like a go-to, like I do it almost every day. Yeah. And then when I don't do it, I'm like, I wanna, okay, so when did you start veiling and when did you figure out uh, that like that was the thing that you needed? So about a year ago, when I first started TikTok, I was seeing some people talking about it. Mm -hmm. I started researching it and it was like when I had just started. So I ordered a bunch of bandanas and started wearing them. Mm. Um, how much is left? Do you think there's some in here? Yeah, I don't have to do me first. Let's get the queen. Let's get the queen. Let's get the queen. Get the fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh yeah. Mine is Picasso Jasper. Ah, oh, what the fuck is that? Right, okay, so, right, yeah. Picasso is kind of an ass. Yeah. Look, yeah. I don't know anything about art. You're an English major, whatever. Yeah, that's what I want. So what were you talking about? Uh, dancing, I think it was the last dancing, thing. Dancing, folk magic. Everyday spell, veiling. Yeah. There it is. So I started veiling right when I got on TikTok. You can see my first videos that were rich. I was wearing a nice pink little bandana. Um, and I started doing it not regularly. I was doing it every so often. And then like, I realized that it was really nice. And I was like, hmm, this is either like, I consider it one of three things. Placebo effect, because I tie something. I used to get a lot of headaches, so tying in a certain way would actually relieve tension in the oh, back of my okay. neck. Um, which was really, really great. When I was like getting pretty severe headaches, I would tie it and I'd be like, it's gone. Um, That's pretty interesting. And I consider it a protective method too, the covering of the head. That's what I usually, if I go into witchy stores, mainly Botanica's, mm -hmm. I always cover my head. Why? Botanica. It's just a superstition, I think, and it's it's mainly because people work magic there. Yeah. So you don't want anything just head. in case. And there's certain stores in LA that I think you should definitely cover your head. Green man, terrible, but. I genuinely feel like when I'm doing like exercise, et cetera, I won't cover my head. And actually, when I'm at home, I probably won't cover my head. I try to cover my head for all my YouTube videos and in most of my TikTok videos because people are perceiving me, you know? And that, do not perceive that me. perception of me <laughs> is how, you know, I'm unprotected if I'm not wearing a veil. You may actually really benefit from veiling. You know what? Maybe I'll try it. With where you're I, at. I veil occasionally, mm -hmm. but like it's not. It's not like I need to veil today. It's usually unless I'm going to a witchy shop. Yeah. Or the graveyard. Mm-hmm. Graveyard's a big old place where you want to wear some, at least some something. Of yeah. I usually unless I'm going there for like a very specific reason why I'm mm -hmm. not having something on my head. But like even my friends, like we had like a little picnic, and I was like, bring a hat or something. And they were like, why? And I was like, just fucking bring, they were like, okay. I was like, we're having a picnic, but like bring a goddamn hat. And they were like, okay. Big protective in graveyards. Who's texting me? Oh, it's one of my friends saying happy boof day. It's my boof day on boof. the day that we're oh, yeah. filming this. I'm 23, which is kind of weird. Old. Just kidding. Old. I, I'm over here like turning 25 at the end of the month. I'm like, old, disgusting, terrible. <laughs> 23 is a big year. Sure. Anyways. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, anyway, what was I saying? So, veiling. Yeah, and I, so veiling comes with like 
there's a lot of stigma, not necessarily bad stigma, most of the stigma falls on a woman of color who veil because we have like the hijab and Muslim women. Oh, yeah. There are certain countries where they are not allowed to wear the hijab and I don't have to worry about that, which is a huge privilege. Mm -hmm. And I hope I never come across as not acknowledging that either. It's just something that like, I'm very aware of and mm -hmm. looking to see how I can help as another person who wears a headscarf. Yeah. Veiling in any type, you will usually get comments. Like I had a comment when I did the veiling method that you posted. Oh, um, appropriation? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's frustrating because it, there's, there's certain ways, right, mm -hmm. that like because of the way that they veil, it, it can be appropriative because yeah, it is something that is rooted in their culture or uh -huh. their religion uh -huh. um, or their practice. And it's a little frustrating because I think a lot of people don't do their research as to like where some of those things come from yeah. and then will call appropriation where it's not. Yeah, you know, which is interesting because like I'm Italian, so veiling is a thing in Italy, especially in Catholic churches. It's something mm -hmm. that like yeah, was Catholic, done. Catholics um, veil, yeah. Uh, but it's always really interesting to have people talk to me about that. I had someone make a video being like, "You're trying to be oppressed." And I'm like, "I am not." Whoa. Um, which I thought it was interesting that they equated veiling with oppression. One, which mm -hmm. seems. Let's unpack that. Yeah, yeah. Let's, I like. I was like, why are you saying that I'm trying to be oppressed by covering my head when I'm white? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to be oppressed no matter what I do because I'm white. Mm -hmm. So why are you assuming that me putting on a headscarf means I'm trying to? Like, it just was like. It, there's just there's a lot to unpack in that right there. Well, of, because like, people assume that head coverings are done not of choice, and this happens to. Hijabi women all the time is they're like, you don't have to wear. You don't have to. I You're know. oppressed. It's like yeah, it's a choice. I'm telling you, if I ever see any one of my commenters on a hijabi woman's post saying some dumb shit about veiling and their head covering, and then you have like super great energy on mine, I will call you out because I that's a double standard, and I know there's for sure people who follow me who have that double standard. I just haven't seen it come out. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, and that's something that I think a lot of people don't even think about. Mm -hmm. Like, they have that in their head, that it's double that standard. It's that bias. Yeah, it's 100% the bias. And I'm like... And, I mean, we're we're raised with that bias. Like, yeah. people, we're socially trained for that, which is awful. But, yeah, so, veiling. <laughs> veiling. In a whole other, I mean, usually. But, yeah, like, uh, that's, I don't veil, like, super often. But sometimes, if I do... It's interesting because again, it goes into that thing of like, I just do it. I don't mm -hmm. like think about it like I need to veil today, but like I'll put on like a headband and, or like a, um, like a bandana. But instead hot. of like covering my full head, I'll it, it's just like tied as like a headband. Yeah. But I'll spray it with Florida water. Mm, question. Yeah. What? No, it's gone. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we want to talk about or what we're gonna say. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. Say thank you to Olivia for being here. Thanks, Olivia. Um, if you want to like, comment, subscribe, feel free to turn the bell on, but no pressure. If you are interested in seeing more content with Olivia, leave a comment, let me know. All of her links are down below in my little caption. Also, if you want a vlog of their visit with me, like, <laughs> go to Olivia's channel up here. Go to Olivia's channel. <laughs> here, 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 right here, here. And yeah, if you watch till the end of the video, you already know how I feel about you. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Remember to drink water. Sa benedica. I gotta remember to put it there now. Here. Thanks for watching. Thanks. My coffee's out. Oh, my coffee's almost out.